Uh, hey guys, what's inside that box? Uh, don't know. Don't know. Miss Rachel just said it was something about pimples. Oh. What does it smell like? Cardboard. A box. What does it feel like? Uh, heavy. Very heavy. What does it taste like? Uh, haven't tried. Haven't tried. Oh, maybe. okay. Um, maybe Miss Rachel knows what's inside of it. I'm really yeah. curious. She seems to know everything, I guess. Three, two, one. Miss Rachel! Oh, hi guys! I'm so glad you got one of the Camp Awesome boxes, Daniel. How's it going under there? Not very good. Yeah, it's a little heavy. Yep. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so you guys are wondering what's inside the Camp Awesome box? Yeah, he can even stand up with it. Yeah, you're so strong. Hey, Daniel. Ah, nice. Well, I can't tell you what's inside of it because it's a surprise. What? Oh. Mm -hmm. But what I can tell you is that all over the city of Portland, there are going to be families from Imago Day doing their DIY Camp Awesome kits in Daniel their homes. What does DIY stand for? Dinosaurs in these are no yellow dinosaurs involved. Okay. I have another one. Okay. Dinosaurs in yarn. Oh, no. there's going to be some yarn involved. Oh, joy. I love yarn. No. Do DIY stands for do it yourself. Oh, so all over Portland, there are going to be different households doing Camp Awesome in a box like this. So on July 19th or July 20th, you're going to come by one of the Imago campuses and pick up your box and take it home. And during that week, we'll have all sorts of activities to do with your family and maybe even with some friends if we're able to gather together in your neighborhood. Man, I totally knew that. It's gonna be actually this. super, super awesome. I bet so you don't forget to register. Registration is gonna close on July 7th. So please jump on Web Connects, that link down below. Sign up to get your Camp Awesome box and we'll be able to get it to you in a couple weeks. Okay, well, sound good? Yep, All right. that's a wrap, let's All go. All right, let's go. Come on, Porky. Okay. Good morning, Imago Day kids. My name is Miss Rachel, and I'm giving announcements for announcements, us today. Announcements, announcements. Last week, we heard a goodbye from Miss Ashley, the director of Eastside Kids. This week, we're returning to our slow story of being with God. To help us get our imaginations ready about how good God's creation is, I've got some silly art from our very own Imago Kids. See eyes. if you can spot what's silly. All right, you guys ready? This is a rocket ship house that fires out grape jam. Does your house fire out grape jam? Absolutely not. Are you sure? Have you tried? This appears to be a whale flying in the sky. Does it have wings? Have you seen a whale flying in the sky lately? Oh yeah, totally. I saw one yesterday. This is a candy cane tree that the sun can touch. I love candy canes. Can you imagine if you had a tree of candy canes? No. This is a brightly colored, oh, excuse me, brightly colored wild animals that are running a farm. Oh, I love those. Those are great. They're beautiful, I, right? I like them. It's kind of weird that animals are running a farm, but okay, here we go. This looks like some maybe uh, dolphins or sharks playing some water volleyball. Awesome. I love water this ball. is a beautiful animal by a stream. There's a lot of animals in this. Yes, there's a lot of animals. And here we go again. A whale in the sky. Oh, wow, another whale in the sky. Ooh, another? We're able to spot some of the silly things. They are very Some silly. things that don't belong. Well, before we get more of that silly action, and before we sing more songs and hear more about being with God, let's celebrate the people who had birthdays this week. If you had a birthday this week, we want to say this blessing over you. Ready? Yes. God made you. God made you. God knows you. God knows you. God loves you. God loves you. Over the summer, Imago Kids is supporting our global team in Nepal. So say this blessing with me over Nepal. You ready, guys? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. God made Nepal. God made Nepal. God knows Nepal. God knows Nepal. 
and God loves Nepal. And God loves Nepal. So do I. Have you, Daniel? That's great. Hey friends, this is Mr. Seth. I'm Sojo. This is my daughter, Sojo. We're just here, we're coloring a poster that we got in the mail this week. It's a really silly picture and things are kind of chaotic in this picture. I don't know if you can tell, but there are pigs that are dressed up like chickens. There are elephants dressed up like cows. There are foxes dressed up like bears playing triangles and ringing bells and clamping tambourines. It's very, very, very silly and chaotic. Last week, in the story that we heard from Miss Michelle, we heard a little bit about chaos. We talked about how God took all of this chaos and he created order, giving everything their place. Miss Michelle showed us a big jumbled up pile of yarn and she turned it into something beautiful, a really, really beautiful sweater. So. In the beginning, there was chaos, and God took the chaos. He brought order, right? So on day one, he separated the light and the dark. On day two, he separated the waters above and the waters below. On day three, he separated the land and the water. And then he planted trees with seeds. So those trees and those flowers would grow and grow and grow and grow into something more beautiful than those seeds could ever even imagine for themselves. So now the question we have to ask in the story is, who is gonna come live in this beautifully ordered world? And where would all of these people live? So day four, God filled up the light and the dark. What did he put in the light, Sojo? The sun and the stars. The sun and the stars and the night, right? And the moon in the night, right? With and beautiful craters stars. and glowing from the light of the sun. Their special job was to show the seasons and times and directions for things. And on day five, God filled up the waters above and the waters below. The sky flyers would go in the sky and the water swimmers and the water below. He didn't put sky flyers in the water. He put each of them in their best place so they could fly and swim. We asked a couple friends this week to draw some pictures for us, imagining what would happen if chaos kept happening and things weren't in the right place. So we got a couple silly pictures. I love this, this picture. This is of a giraffe in the ocean with a bunch of seaweed around him. That is so silly and ridiculous, and I kind of love that picture. And this one, I love this one. On the land, there's a turtle, but there's also a shark coming up out of the mud. There's a goldfish floating by on the land, and there's trees that are growing and growing and growing from their seeds, but they're growing out of the sky. Things are just not right. When God created everything, he put all the animals in the place they needed to be to do what they needed to do. So on day six, God filled up the water and the land with all of the animals. Each of them had their own place. Not like this picture with dogs trying to be chickens and fish trying to be foxes. That's just silly. That doesn't work. That's not what it was made to do. So God put land animals on the land. He put water animals in the water. He put sky animals in the sky. And lastly, after he made all the animals and put them in their place, he made the most special of all creation. He made his people. He made a man and he made a woman. Their names were Adam and Eve. He put the man and the woman together and with their seeds, just like the flowers and the trees that would grow into something beautiful, with Adam and Eve's seeds that God created them in, in their biology, incredible, beautiful people would grow and grow and grow and grow and fill up the whole earth one day. Maybe it looked something like this picture that our family do today. Sometimes they would be grumpy people. Sometimes they would be happy people. Some people would have crazy beards. It's one of my favorites. Some people would have beautiful curly hair. Some people would have wavy hair. Maybe they'd have cornrows or dreadlocks. Maybe they'd look like an alien. The whole earth would grow from the seeds of this man and woman that God created. 
Now just one more thing was missing. It wasn't the dark, it wasn't the light, it wasn't the sky and it wasn't the sea. It wasn't the land or the trees or the stars or the animals and it wasn't God's perfect people. Just one more thing was needed for this beautiful week to be complete. What was it? We will find out next week. See you guys later. We love and miss you. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the King Family Breakfast Table. We are just about to eat, but before we eat in our family, we always choose to pray together. And I know there are a lot of families out there that pray before they eat. And I thought we would talk just for a couple minutes this morning about why we pray before we eat. So what do you guys think? Why do we pray before we eat, Mateo? Um, but... You still waking up a little bit? Yeah. That's okay. So Joe, why do we pray before we eat? What do you think? Because we are trying to say thank you, Jesus, because he makes everything. We're trying to say thank you, Jesus, because he makes everything. In the Bible, we're working on reading the Bible with Imago Kids this summer. We're working on singing together with our families in Imago Kids this summer. And we're working on praying together in Imago Kids families this summer. In the Bible, it says every good and perfect thing comes from God. And we, in this family, we really like to eat food. That is a good and perfect thing that comes from God. So we're going to take a second. We're going to pray and we're going to um, close our eyes when we pray because it helps us and our family not be distracted when we close our eyes. The Bible doesn't say you have to close your eyes when you pray, but for us, it helps when we close our eyes when we pray so we can think about what we're saying. So, Mateo, do you want to pray first? And the cool thing is, Jesus even understands our prayers even when we might not. So that's great. So, Joe, do you want to pray for us too? Sure. Dear God, thanks for helping us. Thanks for being for us. Thanks for making everything for us. And thank you for our food. Jesus, thank you. Amen. All right, Amago kids, we love you guys. Take some time and pray with your families and your communities today. Bye.